The moral growth of a great nation requires reflection, as well as observation, to appreciate it. My name is Maddie. Allow me to share with you the story of my home, Clarksville, Tennessee, and how we survived four long years of the Civil War. Clarksville is the seat of Montgomery County, near the border with Kentucky. Before the war, we were a growing and prosperous river town and reaped the harvest of crops and healthy trade on the Cumberland River. Since the time of our settlement, Ours has been an interesting history. Life here was very good until the clouds of war gathered. We talked about remaining loyal to the Union or secede to join the Confederacy. At first, Clark's Fians were against secession, but the firing upon Fort Sumter changed many minds. Companies of volunteers are being raised, and some of Clarksville's finest men are leading them. Even my husband has closed his store and joined the Army. Training camps have opened at the fairgrounds in Hampton Station. Men from Kentucky are in our county to form southern units at Camp Boone. Our women visit the camps to encourage the soldiers, who appreciate our ladylike presence and home-cooked food. Our sewing circle is busy making clothing and blankets for the troops. We are confident the Federals will not violate Kentucky's neutrality, but Major Gilmer plans for three forts to protect our town. And I hope our townspeople turn out to ensure our safety. Union troops and gunboats attacked Fort Henry on the Tennessee River. Most of the men got out, but General Tillman and a handful stayed. If a post as strong as Fort Henry can be overtaken, what can we expect from our smaller forts in Clarksville? News comes of our glorious victory at Fort Donaldson. War now lands on our threshold as scores of wounded soldiers arrive in Clarksville. Ready. I feel that life is changing Aim. forever. struggle this time. Let us pray. 
kind and gracious heaven. At church on Sunday, I heard the terrible news that Fort Donaldson surrendered. And 17,000 of our boys are Union prisoners. Be with our wounded, our brave, and our true. I thought we were victorious. What a calamitous turn of events. Hospitals caring for sick soldiers from the training camps now treat the wounded from as far away as Texas and Alabama. At the Female Academy, they mourn the loss of two of the most dedicated nurses, the Bibb sisters. They were Negroes who contracted measles from sick soldiers and died. I hope our wounded boys from Clarksville are cared for, wherever they may be. I pray for the well-being of my dear husband. And what of our boys who are prisoners? Will they be taken north? When Donaldson fell, our forts were abandoned. There is nothing between our town and the Yankees. People are leaving Clarksville, heading anywhere, and merchants are closing their stores in fear of confiscation of their goods. The river that once brought steamboats and prosperity has delivered demon Yankee gunboats. Columns of smoke came round the bend and when they dropped anchor, they rolled out their guns as if expecting a fight. It was fearsome. I am terrified. Clarksville will be shelled and burned. It perplexes me that the riverbank was lined with Negroes when the gunboats arrived, as if they knew the boats were coming. Flag Officer Foote met with Cave Johnson, Judge Wisdom, and Mayor Smith and promised not to harm our property, issuing a proclamation to that effect. Andrew Johnson is military governor of Tennessee and he demands that we take oaths of allegiance to the Union support the Constitution of the United States of America. and secure passes to go about our daily lives. And not take arms up against her. So help me God. Passes are needed to cross the river between Clarksville and New Providence. The loss of Nashville has diminished our morale. We have been in the Confederacy only since July, and now our state's capital has fallen. Glorious day. Colonels Thomas Woodard and Adam Johnson came with their cavalry and liberated the town. Now the Yankees are our prisoners. In gratitude, we presented Colonel Johnson with a new flag. I hope this means our boys are back for good. News reached us that our local hero, Colonel Forbes of the 14th, is horribly wounded at Manassas. We fear he may never see his home again. Since Colonel Lowe's men left, no troops from either side have returned to Clarksville. Life over the past few months has been somewhat normal. We are afraid to become too accustomed to this new comfort as we constantly hear rumors of the Yankees' return. Stand in his blood! <laughs> Our boys in the 14th under General Robert E. Lee have achieved a signal victory at Fredericksburg. This warms our hearts despite the cold chill of renewed occupation. Our Christmas spirit is dampened as we just received an unwanted gift. The Yankees are back in Clarksville. Colonel Sanders Bruce commands the Yankee Brigade here and has renamed the fort for himself. He is from Kentucky and has proven quite popular with certain citizens. Nonetheless, the guns at the fort are trained upon Clarksville should our southern boys return. We again need passes to travel and the oaths are required. 
Colonel Bruce is not the heavy hand of occupation we have endured, but I still pray they were not among us. This Independence Day is our second under occupation. It has been made even more dismal by the news of General Lee's retreat from Gettysburg. The 14th Tennessee were badly cut up in a great charge, and Colonel Lockhart of our town was captured. The terrible news from Mississippi is that Vicksburg has surrendered. Colonel Bruce is transferred away, and some miss his favorable nature. Our new hosts are the 83rd Illinois, and they treat us roughly. I heard one of them even stole money and spent time in our city jail. Ever since Mr. Lincoln's proclamation, Negroes had been flocking to the fort in droves. The Yankees used them for labor and as teamsters. Some cringe to hear about the recruitment of Negro regiments and at the prospect of them being armed. The town is becoming lively and some merchants have opened, but prices are very high. We see more and more Negro soldiers in town from the regiment being raised in New Providence. And some citizens resent showing them passes. There was a terrible fire during the night of November 7th. A number of homes were burned to ashes, along with churches and the Masonic Hall. Bryce Stewart claims the Yankee soldier set the fire. Newspapers from Chattanooga bear the news that General Bragg's army has been routed and is retreating into Georgia. Our valiant Colonel Sugg of the 50th was shot down and has since died. The war is further from us now, and it seems less likely that our troops will ever retake Clarks. Great campaigns to decide our fate have begun. Grant is pressing Lee in Virginia. The discouraging word is that Atlanta has surrendered, and Lee fights for his life between Richmond and Petersburg. General Hood's advance into Tennessee gave hope of victory but the horrendous assault at Franklin shattered our army and killed six generals. Our beloved 49th was nearly wiped out with many local men dead or wounded on the field. Bitter cold has arrived. It is sleeting in the hills around Nashville where Hood's army is encamped and our beleaguered boys are without shelter. We hear that Yankee General Thomas attacked our army and drove them from Nashville in great confusion. General Forrest is the rear guard, and only he can save that army from destruction. It feels as if the war has dragged on forever. We just want our loved ones back home, and our lives back to normal. Lee's defeat in Virginia shattered the South's last hope. We now understand the Confederacy has gone up, furled its banner, and peace of some sort, either for well or woe, will take place shortly. Yesterday was a grand meeting in the churches of Clarksville to mourn the death of Abraham Lincoln. Judge Shackelford and Mr. Lurton have published resolutions condemning the murder and pledging support to our new president, Andrew Johnson. As a fellow Tennessean, we hope he remembers his home state with some kindness and a spirit of reconciliation, since we too were divided within. Somehow, 
Clarksville survived the trials of war and occupation. Our men have returned from distant battlefields, though many are missing arms and legs. The need for artificial limbs is great. I pray their spirits will heal, if not their shattered bodies. Life is slowly returning to normal. Steamboats laden with goods are arriving and businesses that weather this awful ordeal are restocking. My husband is home again, thankfully whole, and is preparing to reopen his store. As Mr. Lincoln said, we must embrace today and tomorrow with malice toward none, with charity for all. We have much to overcome, but with the grace of God, we will move forward and our country will be made whole again. <laughs>